Hey everyone, I'm Luke from Twitch. Um, I'm here to spend uh, 10 minutes talking about server-side ads and really <laughs> rush through the slides because it's a kind of a, uh, a complicated uh, subject. Um, but so Twitch, uh, we do uh, live streaming, uh, video games mostly. Um, and one of the big uh, problems that we face is actually that our, uh, our audience is very tech literate. And in this case, a lot of them ad run ad block. So uh, we've been running something in, for two years in production that more or less tries to, to, to work around it. And I want to show you how it kind of works. So uh, here we have a simple ad blocker. This is just taken from EasyList. Um, usually, all they do is they just take a regex on a URL and say, if it comes from this domain, uh, just block it. Um, it's uh, something that is uh, pretty straightforward. And um, in this case, we block anything to adservice.google.com if it's from twitch.tv. Um, so how do we fix this? Uh, usually, you can just serve from a different domain. Uh, there are uh, providers out there that will actually serve your ads from a different domain and try to like change the URLs to make it so it just uh, uh, these uh, lists aren't up to date. Um, in our case, our solution is, hey, we just serve it from the same edge. We run our own edge, so we can serve it from the same host that uh, actually de deliver the content. Um, easy. Easy ad blockers fixed. But the problem is the more advanced ones. So um, turns out, uh, when you write a, uh, a browser plugin, you can just insert arbitrary JavaScript. So there are more advanced uh, ones, and this is actually taken from the uBlock source code, that say, if this is Twitch, if it's in the host name, run this code. And the code can do whatever it wants. It could remove things. It could, uh, it could stop requests entirely. It could insert its own library that just pretends to do ads. Um, so we need a way of working around that. And that's mostly what this project was. Um, so our solution is to stitch ads on the server side, uh, make it part of the live stream, make it so any HLS-compatible player will actually just accidentally uh, play ads. Like, ooh, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Um, so uh, this is a little talk on how we actually do this. So uh, we have a live playlist. Uh, in this case, this is uh, one of our Twitch streams. Uh, everything's just durations followed by URL, duration, URL, duration, URL. Uh, and then we have an ad, which is um, the same thing, except it actually has an end list. Now, the whole theory of uh, uh, ad stitching is pretty much taking this VOD and putting it at the end of a live stream. And then once the VOD's over, continue the live stream like nothing happened. Um, but how do you do that? Are you just allowed to copy paste? Uh, not quite. It's not actually HLS compatible. Um, so we have to do some little extra stuff. So the first problem are timestamps. Uh, so when you have a live stream, starts at timestamp zero. <laughs> runs and runs and runs and runs, and then somebody joins your ad like you know, two hours later, um, the timestamps are going to be pretty huge. Um, ads, by, by default, are uh, transcoded and start at timestamp zero. So if you were just just insert the frames in the middle there, the decoder would have no idea what's going on. It would just get like really old PTS uh, timestamps. Um, so you can do something like we could, for example, transmux on the edge and rewrite these timestamps. Uh, we have a simpler solution. Uh, we put a discontinuity tag. Uh, it tells the player to effectively reset the decoder um, and uh, um, play back like it's a brand new stream. So this is kind of an easy uh, uh, fix. And here's the discontinuity tags. Um, so we put them between the live and the, the VOD segments. We have another problem. Uh, this one is kind of Twitch specific, um, which is kind of cool and why I like this talk. Um, Twitch, uh, what happens is usually when you have um, two different streams, they have different settings. Different profiles, different, you know, whatever. Um, a player is not going to like you all of a sudden, like switching, uh, trying to switch that profile on the, uh, the fly. Um, what you could do is you could just transcode everything so they all have the same exact profile. So if you're serving a 720p uh, live stream, your ads will also be the same 720p uh, transcoding stack. Unfortunately, we can't do this at Twitch um, because what we serve is source. Um, source is actually transcoded or, or encoded on the, uh, uh, the streamer's machine. And they can use whatever settings they want. Uh, so we can't exactly make every possible ad and every possible encoding uh, that they use. Um, so this may seem bad, but it turns out we can just do a discontinuity as well. Um, this is, it feels a little bit like cheating just to say, hey, just reset the um, decoder. But we have to do it anyway. Um, and uh, it's easy enough. Um, so here's, again, just a discontinuity. Um, I wanted to stitch an ad in the middle of my slides. So Here's our potato. This is our test ad. Um, you, even you guys are immune. Um, anyway, next problem. <laughs> next problem are um, durations. Now, this is actually the big one. Um, 
we didn't think of this when we were going through it, but it turns out um, when you have a live stream, such as uh, every one second, or in this example, every two seconds, there's a segment, um, and you have an ad that's not quite the same length, you start having issues when you actually come back from the ad. So ad start is fine. You just put the ad whenever you want. Uh, but when you uh, exit the ad, you have this little gap here where if every two seconds we're supposed to do a live stream and then you have a three second ad, you have this one second of just missing space. What do you do there? Um, there's a bunch of options like putting a black screen or, or you know, extending the ad so they're always uh, equal. Um, again, Twitch has this problem that we don't actually control the source encoding. So broadcasters can choose whatever keyframe interval they want. They can make segments wherever they want. And we just can't transcode in every possible permutation of, uh, uh, of those uh, uh, intervals. Um, so what we do is we uh, insert a, an, uh, we effectively insert a little bit of latency, um, which is kind of a big deal for Twitch. We try to keep really low latency, like the, the last talk, um, to actually kind of create a little bit of a delay for the user, just to make it still seamless. We don't put like a black screen. We have no blips. Um, so in this case, we start going back into the, uh, the third segment, uh, live three, just a little bit, uh, a second uh, later than it normally would have been. Um, so not a great experience, but that's the evil of ads, I guess. Um, another problem is we have targeted ads. Um, so when you run broadcast TV, in a lot of cases, you will target ads either to a region or nationally, and uh, it means that the same users will see the same ads, or not same users, a lot of users will see the same ads. Um, Twitch, we're a web, a web company, so for the most part, ads are very targeted on the web. Um, it depends on what channel you're watching, what game, your user specifics, where you live. Um, just because you're watching the streamer in Romania doesn't mean you want to see Romanian copy ads. Um, so we have to uh, individually uh, target users with uh, specific ads. Um, so what we do is we basically we wrote a playlist server. Um, so we dynamically generate these playlists. We don't just serve them as files off of disk and, and front them with our edge. Um, wrote something called Weaver. It's a Dota reference, so everything, every project I name is a Dota hero. Um, uh, it's also a pun, which is great. Uh, but we request ads on a per-user basis. We effectively request ads on behalf of the user uh, with you know, their details. Um, we make sure it scales, because we actually use Weaver for every request, even if we're not handling any ads. Um, and the main problem as well is it needs to be HLS compatible uh, or compliant. So when we serve a segment or we serve these ad segments, on the next refresh, it could be you know, minutes later, we want to make sure that we still serve the same segments again. We actually have to make sure it still looks like it's an append-only file, even though we're dynamically generating every single request. Um, and finally, the last problem. Uh, this is actually probably the most complicated, um, and I don't have any details, well, not any details, the, as many. Uh, is beaconing. So um, ads on the internet, um, the, usually when you have client-side ads, um, you're trying to watch on your browser. When you're watching through an ad, like you're, uh, you start the ad, you're 50% through and you're 100% through, it'll actually send a beacon um, to say, I've watched this ad partially. Um, it's a little bit like, kind of like tracking, but not really. Um, you get paid based on these beacons. So even if you just show an ad in there, if the advertiser doesn't know that the person actually watched it, they won't pay you. Um, so this is a problem with server-side ads, because we just say that we put it in the stream. Uh, how do we actually handle that? Um, so more or less, we, on the server-side, have to try and, I wouldn't say guess, but figure out when the user actually watches the ad, uh, based on when they downloaded it. Um, so we have to make a more or less an assumption and fire these beacons that we're, we're told to, um, and do this again in a distributed manner. Um, so we run servers around the world. We have, you know, we're on edge, effectively. and. Uh, we uh, have to do this in a scalable manner. That's like the gist of it. It's all very complicated, but um, uh, we more or less try and figure out based on downloads when to beacon. And uh, that's all I got. That was a quick 10-minute like lightning talk. Uh <laughs>